Okay, so uh, good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for coming again. Uh, to those of you um, uh, who were here uh, with us, I think you were all were here uh, with us on um, on Monday. I think there's one last today. But that's okay. Like I said, uh, my stuff will be uh, posted um, on my YouTube channel uh, in its entirety. So be aware that however long this video is, is um, how long the video will be on my YouTube channel. Okay. So uh, hopefully you uh, you looked over the uh, the nomenclature stuff um, last class in preparation for today. Uh, today we're going to look at. Uh, acid-based nomenclature. So acid-based nomenclature, we're going to look at um, the uh, so acid-based nomenclature, we're going to look at hydrate compounds as well as, um, and finally, we're going to look at covalence. Covalence, nice and simple, uh, but I don't introduce it until the very end because the rule for covalence is completely different from all the ones that we've done up uh, that we'll do up until that one okay uh so um and one of the reasons for that is because if i introduce it too early i feel that students will start to use the rules for the covalence for everything and realize that it's it's not so one of the the arching themes that we've we've been looking at with nomenclature is the idea that we identify metal non-metal and up until now everything has been metal, non-metal. And when we're identifying the metal, always be careful of the multivalent metals, okay? So we want to be very careful with any of the multivalent metals, okay? So we want to be careful of the multivalent. I'm having issues with my pen all day today. Uh, so multivalent, right? Because those are the ones that have um, multiple oxidations. So, um, so those are the ones you always want to be careful because when you write the name of these multivalent metals, remember to include the Roman numeral immediately after writing the metal. Uh, be aware that some we use the um, uh, the Latin name. Uh, so I don't really care for you to give me the Latin name, um, but be aware that sometimes in a, in a sample problem or in one of the homework questions, you may find one of those uh, Latin name um, uh, metals, okay? So just be aware how to figure it out. Uh, but like I said, because of the, uh, the nature of how we're running our, our course, uh, it's going to be uh, very hard to um to do the, some of the types of evaluations that i had planned uh if we were actually in the classroom uh, but like i said we're gonna kind of take it uh day by day and see uh, i am in the midst of working on uh, some stuff some of the assignments um as well as some of the uh the quizzes uh, and tests that we're going to see um along the way but i'm still waiting for direction from um um, uh, my administration uh, as to uh, how to go about proceeding. But anyhow, let's uh, let's get into tonight's lesson. Uh, right now, we're going to look at uh, acid-based nomenclature. You'll see in really nine slides, not too many. Some of them are going to be the sample problems. Um, so let's look at the uh, the first uh, first little slide there. Um, when naming acids, okay, very very important to identify the following. There are two types of acids. You've got your binary acid and your polyatomic acid. So a binary acid, really simple. Um, it's just H with a, uh, actually, let's, uh, oops. Oops. I don't, know. I don't think I have it here. Uh, I thought I had it in my notes. Anyhow, um, what we have here is um, all the acids uh, with one exception that we might see, um, and I'll talk about it in, a, uh, in this lesson. Uh, they're all gonna start with H, okay? So they're all gonna start with hydrogen. Now for the binary acids, remember what we said uh, last class with binary, binary meaning two, okay? So two types of elements, 
okay, are two types of atoms. One of the atoms is going to be hydrogen. The other is going to be some kind of non-metal. Okay, so any type of non-metal. Uh, so look on the side of the non-metals on the periodic table, right? You can have uh, bromine, you can have chlorine, you can have fluorine, um, you can have nitrogen, you can have phosphorus. Okay, so these are binary acids. The crossover rule also applies for all those um, uh, for all of those. Okay, um, so when we're putting together those formulas. Um, same thing, no, the oxidation number for hydrogen is a plus one. So it's always a plus one crossing over. There's really, in terms of, if you remember the crossover rule that we talked about last class, um, there's nothing to simplify in these ones because you're always gonna cross over a plus one from hydrogen. Hydrogen's oxidation number plus one, that gets crossed over as we mentioned last class. Um, in terms of simplifying, if one of the ones that you cross over is a one, um, there's nothing to simplify because it's already in lowest terms. Okay, uh, so uh, and of course the the other number, right? The uh, the non-metal number. Okay, let's say bromine minus one. If you look up um, nitrogen, nitrogen is a minus three. Phosphorus minus three. Okay, so when those get crossed over right? Um, that's really the only number that you're crossing over. You're in fact really crossing over the, um, the oxidation number of the non-metal because that plus one is going to get eliminated anyways. Um, so uh, the second type of metal are the polyatomic metals. Okay, the polyatomic metals. So those polyatomic metals um, have hydrogen with them. Uh, of course, as we said, they start with H and they're gonna have some kind of polyatomic with it. So think of the Nick the Camel that we, we looked at last class, right? With, um, let's say like nitrate, right? If we add an H to it, we remove a charge and there is the acid. Let's see if I can get it thinner. Okay, uh, there is the acid. Okay, but again, one thing to make note with acids, um, we always put the little AQ. So remember that this uh, this aqueous part always get needs to be put after the um, um, after the formula, so that we are referring to an acid because acids are aqueous in solution. So they are some kind of salt dissolved in water. Okay. So otherwise, um, so here we have this, and we're going to see it in a moment right? Because that's what today's lesson. But I'm going to give you the answer for this one. This is nitric acid. Okay, let me give you another polyatomic acid. Uh, the derivative is sulfate. Okay, so if it's a minus two, right? If it's a minus two, that minus two comes over uh, to the A, right? The H has a plus one that crosses over. We don't need the plus one, right? So let's erase that plus one. We're going to bring this minus two over. Oops. And this is the formula for this type of acid. Yeah, my pen today is acting up. Sorry for the uh, the type of writing that we're getting. Um, so the um, the, here's an example of a polyatomic acid. Um, now let's go back to the naming. This the first one that we did. This one's nitric acid. Um, this here is sulfuric acid without the AQ. So I'm going to eliminate the AQ. This is no longer an acid. I eliminate the AQ here. This is no longer an acid. Now, the name of this first one that I did here is going to be hydrogen nitrate. This one is going to be a hydrogen sulfate. Okay, so notice how we don't call it an acid. Okay, so anyhow, let's, um, let's move on. Oops. So we've got now bases, base nomenclature. Um, it's one of the polyatomics that uh, you need to memorize or you'll have on the sheet. Um, and it consists of the hydroxide ion. 
Okay, so we're gonna have the hydroxide ion, okay, uh, on um, uh, as our uh, for the non-metal. Okay, so we're gonna have some kind of a metal, any kind of metal. Here are a bunch of examples. Notice how they all have the hydroxide. Okay, and with the hydroxide, we have some kind of metal in front of it. So we have sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, and aluminum hydroxide. Okay, so all uh, bases are a metal with hydroxide. Okay, and again, and these ones also are aqueous. Uh, we typically put AQ, um, but whether we put it or not, um, it won't change the name. It'll still be whatever, right? Sodium hydroxide, whether we put the AQ there or not. Okay, uh, so it doesn't change the name if we include the AQ or don't include the AQ. However, for acids, for acids, going back to acid, we need, we need to include the AQ. Okay, because like I said before, when I was in this previous slide uh, with all the writing that I had, um, it would give you, it would generate a whole different name. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the rules. So here, um, so, so when you identify an acid, hint, hint, starts with H, includes AQ. That's your hint, hint. Okay, that is the trick to identify that you've got an acid. Now, how to go about naming it, that's the, this is the trick. So when you go about naming acids, you need to identify the acid. Once you've identified the acid, you have to figure out, is it a binary acid or is it a polyatomic acid? Okay, let's, so let's go to the binary acids. These are the simple acids. So they're, they, ha they both have completely different types of naming. Okay, so in binary acids, um, they all end in ic acid. Okay, they all end in ic acid, but they will all include a prefix of hydro in front of it. Okay, so here um, with these examples, right, hydrofluoric acid, so the hydro and the ic acid. Right. Hydro and the ic acid. Hydro with the ic acid. Hydro with the ic acid ending. Because these are all um, binary acids. Okay. Um, so we uh, so when we're naming it, right? It's hydrogen with fluorine without the aq. This would be hydrogen fluoride. Hydrogen fluoride. This would be without the aq. Hydrogen bromide. Without the AQ, hydrogen iodide. Okay, and this one here, hydrogen sulfide. Without the AQ, but with the AQ, we associate. We now we refer to them as acids, and the rules for the acids will include hydro in front of the name. So it's it makes it's one big word. Okay, hydrofluoric acid, hydrobromic acid hydroiodic acid and hydrosulfuric acid. Okay, so notice it's one big, we don't write the word hydrogen. So we don't write hydrogen, so for this first one, okay, for this first one, we don't write hydrogen um, fluoric acid. Okay, it's hydro, that's the rule for binary acid. So be, um, be aware of uh, how we uh, we go about naming these binary acids. Okay, uh, let's look at the polyatomic acids. So polyatomic acids follow its own rule. Okay, notice here. Uh, so we've got uh, this 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 table. Notice here uh, the separation of this table right here. Right. So we've got we we don't have the AQ on the left. We have the AQ on the right. Notice the name difference. Okay, so without, without the AQs, they, we call it a hydrogen, and this is perchlorate. ClO3, the one I just circled, that's chlorate. 
Last class, we talked about these polyatomic variations. If I add an O, that's, we're adding a per prefix. If we're taking away an O from this one, we are changing the prefix to it. The it, remember the eight implies with oxygen. The it also implies with oxygen, but with one less oxygen. And if we've got the hypoite, okay, this is all uh, a review uh, from last class's stuff that we were, we were discussing, what I hope that you were able to take from last class, please go back to it. Um, so the it implies also with oxygen, but with less oxygen. So an it ending, one less oxygen, but a hypoite, as in this last one, a hypo and it implies, so there are two changes to the name. So there's two oxygens removed from the original derivative. Remember the derivative, what I call the derivative are the ones that we can get from Nick, Camel, Clam, Supper, Phoenix from uh, the last lesson. Anyhow, let's go, how do we name these polyatomic acids? One thing that you're gonna notice, there is no hydro in front of any of the polyatomic acids, okay? So, binary acids. Binary acids have the hydro ending. Polyatomic acids or oxy acids do not have the hydro uh, prefix. Sorry, did I say ending? I might have said ending. The hydro prefix. So, notice, and yeah, don't mistake this last one. This last one is not, is not hydro, it's hypo. Hypo because we've lost two uh, oxygens from the derivative. So it's not, so, so the, the derivative polyatomic, we're, so if we have an eight polyatomic or a per eight polyatomic, the name ending is an ic acid or a per ic acid. So here is the ic acid, here is the per ic acid. If the polyatomic ending is ite, or a hypoite, the ending is an us acid or a hypo us acid. So here, right, ClO2, oh, wait a second, I remember chlorate, chlorate is ClO3, so now I have ClO2, so that's one less uh, oxygen, so I'm looking at chlorite. But how do we call the name, the acid of the chlorite? It's a chlorus acid. This has two less uh, oxygens from this derivative. So it's a hypochlorous acid. Okay, so these are just some rules to help remember or what you, you're going to need to know to be able to get these, um, the na these names for the polyatomic because eventually in, in unit two, you're going to be given um, Actually, and, and even at the tail end of unit one, you're gonna be given the names of these compounds. So it'll be up to you to be able to put together these formulas, okay? So these formulas, um, if you can't put them together, they're gonna to become a struggle, okay? So, um, so just be very, very careful. Uh, tonight, I'm gonna to try to show you um, the, uh, what do you call it? The, um, that Quizlet app. If you got a chance to look at it, great. If you didn't, uh, it's okay. We'll try to, to, um, to look at the Quizlet app uh, tonight. Okay, so um, let's, uh, let's move on. So um, here are some sample problems and practice problems. Great tool to use, okay? Uh, try these out on your own. We're gonna, I'm just gonna go straight to the answers, okay? Um, so we can discuss them. Okay, so here we have um, these answers. Let's, uh, let's look at them. So calcium hydroxide, nice and simple, right? Calcium and the hydroxide polyatomic. Um, now here, this acid here, it's, we know it's an acid because of the AQ, starts with H, 
but it's a polyatomic acid. So we've got to look at the rules for polyatomic. Oh, this SO3 looks like one of the polyatomic. So let's think Nick, Camel, Clam, Supper. Oh, Supper is the one that's going to give me SO4 minus 2. But it's not SO4 minus 2. So this is not sulfate. It looks like sulfate. It's a derivative of sulfate, SO4. So to get the SO3, this SO4 to become a 3, we lose an oxygen. So that means this here is a sulfite. Okay, but because it's an acid, the sulfite ending, right? Let's go back here. The sulfite ending, okay, the sulfite ending is going to have an us acid. Okay. So let's erase that and get to the answer. Okay. And there is the answer. Sul fight. Oh, sorry, sulfurous acid. Okay. Um, this next one here, uh, hydrogen with the AQ, but it's just a non-metal, no polyatomic. So this is one of the simple, the binary acids. Okay, so we use the hydro and we put ic acid. So it's a hydrobromic acid. Um, here we've got a polyatomic acid. Okay, so this is the standard phosphate polyatomic um, with the AQ. So it's phosphoric acid. Okay, this one nice and simple. It's a base. Okay, uh, but first always look up the metal. Okay, we look up the metal for strontium. You'll notice strontium only has um, one oxidation number, which happens to be a plus two. Uh, so we don't put a Roman numeral uh, with that one. Uh, next one here, this is a binary acid. So binary acids, we have the hydro at the beginning. So hydroiodic acid. H2S, again, another binary acid. So a hydro in front. An ic acid, so hydrogen hydrosulfuric acid. It's technically sulfic acid, but let's just put sulfur and the ic uh, just to make them all simple, okay? Because uh, technically this one's really considered a hydrosulfic acid, but you know, ignore what I just said. Uh, if it's confusing you, uh, we're just going to keep it as hydrosulfuric acid or sulfuric acid for the. Um, uh, if, if it was the uh, the polyatomic one. So if we had the H2SO4AQ, uh, right, that would be the hydrosulfuric acid. Okay. Um, next one here, carbonic acid, the polyatomic uh, is carbonate. So the carbonate becomes carbonic or carbonic and you put the word acid. The word acid must be there. Please uh, make sure that you include the word acid. Okay, don't get lazy and, and ignore the word acid. The acid needs to be in the name. Um, so we've got an aluminum. Look up aluminum. Uh, find out if it's multivalent or not. Aluminum is not multivalent. Uh, so it's aluminum hydroxide. Uh, be careful with this one here. There's no AQ. It looks like it's an acid because it starts with H. Uh, but there's no AQ, okay? So you would just name it hydrogen fluoride. Nice um, and simple. So let's uh, clear that. Let's uh, go to the next answers. So um, while I kind of explain this, um, you can try to work them out um, in the meantime. Uh, so just to, uh, to look here, um, with this one, hydro, right? Look at the ones for with hydro. Um, that's the only one with hydro. So that means this one is going to be a binary acid. Okay. Notice there's no hydro here. Okay. So we know this one's got to be a polyatomic acid. Here's another one, no hydro with it. So it's got to be a polyatomic acid. Here's another one, carbonous acid, got to be po polyatomic acid. Okay, perchloric acid, got to be a polyatomic acid. Hypophosphorous acid, again, don't, don't mistake that, that's not hydro. Okay, so again, this is another one of those um, 
polyatomic acids. And then last one here, hydrogen hypocarbonate. No acid. So that means there's no AQ, but it's going to start with an H and end with the hypocarbonate. Okay, so let's look at the answers. Uh, and there you have it. The only, the only um, binary acid was this first one. Okay, where did that three come from? It came from the charge or oxidation number of nitrogen. Um, so again, hydrogen front, right? So here, notice, now here's a difference. Here's, uh, and I, I want to point out, notice how many hydrogens in this one, how many hydrogens in this one, how many hydrogens in that one. That number, this three came from there. This two came from there. There's no number here, which means the charge, the oxidation number was that. Okay, so if you look back at those polyatomics, you'll see how, why, why are some of these polyatomics, why do, or sorry, some, why do some of these polyatomic acids have more than one H? And well, it's based on the oxidation number of that polyatomic that it's with. Okay, so here's another one where there's only one H. Why? Because the oxidation number that crossed over was a minus one. Look at this polyatomic, uh, sorry, um, this um, number of H's. Okay, this oxidation number was a two, minus two. Here's another one. This oxidation number was a minus two. Okay, so you've got to know these polyatomics. Um, have the chart with you uh, when you're doing any of the, um, the, uh, the, the problems or any of the homework. Uh, there's not too many questions for homework in this unit because um, for this unit, I think I only have, um, the only thing I have, I think, is just what I typically use for a, a test review. Okay, so you can do the test review. Um, the answers are there uh, for you to, uh, to make reference to. Um, my advice to you though, if you are may, uh, noticing the mistakes, um, be aware, um, don't just change the mistake, okay? Um, what I want you to do is look to see what you did different, what, what did you do wrong? Okay, and then try to figure out what it was. Look at the notes, see if you can still get to that, the correct answer on your own with your notes. Um, because just changing it isn't gonna help you. You're, you're more likely, you're most likely to make the same mistake eventually um, when, um, uh, when, when you're writing out these, these formulas again. So please, please, I can't stress enough, um, don't just change your answer if you see what the correct answer is. Um, figure out what it is that you did wrong. Okay, so um, so that's uh, that's that. Um, I'm gonna leave it to you now. Um, any questions? Any questions? Uh, so please uh, feel free to uh, send a question. Um, Telling me to upgrade now. I don't know why. It's telling me I have 10 minutes left. Okay. Um, if, if it does uh, end it in 10 minutes, I will see about trying to get back on shortly after it. So I don't know. What time is it? Okay. So I'll try to um, try to set it up again. Apparently, they put the uh, the restriction back. Oh well. Anyhow, um, let's uh, let's move on. Any questions? No questions. Doesn't look like anybody's uh, written anything in the uh, in the chat. Uh, so okay. So let's. Um, Sharing. Uh, let's get to the next lesson. Okay, next lesson we're going to look at uh, hydrates. Um, a, it, this is a simple one. Um, and we'll try to do it, we'll try to end that one 
within the eight minutes 30 about a countdown on the screen you'll see it's a short slide anyways uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to end the session with that within um, actually let's try let's just go right to the uh, the end uh, and we'll just kind of continue it uh, after if we can okay otherwise um, Monday okay otherwise Monday uh, we will continue okay so please do look over the covalence if we don't have time to uh, within the time that we're in okay so enough babbling hydrate compounds so the term hydrate means with water okay so if you're hydrating yourself you're taking in water um, when one thing you're going to notice with all of these is um, that there is actual water molecule that is associated with these ionic compounds okay um, and how do we name the water part we actually use the greek prefixes so we use mono di tri tetra penta hexa hepta octa nana and deca okay uh, for the uh, the prefixes okay so let's look at uh, one of the names so here is an example so here are the rules you're going to name the polyatomic ion as usual okay um so here's the polyatomic so the name of this polyatomic is a copper two sulfate or a cupric sulfate okay um and then we've got five waters so hydrates but how the we've got the five waters so it's a penta hydrate okay that's it that's all it is for the naming okay so that you name the first part as is but then you're going to use when you're if when you're writing the formula you're going to notice there's this dot this dot separates the water so you're going to have the the the, the polyatomic or just typical binary ionic compounds always going to be ionic okay and then you're going to have this water separated um, with that dot Okay, so if we had three waters here, it would be a trihydrate. If we had uh, seven waters, it would be a heptahydrate. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so you're using those Greek prefixes um, to, to answer those. So let's look at the uh, sample problems. Ignore the little box. I don't know why, and the sample problems is doing it, been working on it, um, and I don't know if they've fixed the bug but anyhow um so with regards to the naming okay we're gonna look at um these answers uh for uh for this um so there's 10 waters so it'd be a decahydrate seven waters a heptahydrate three waters a trihydrate okay and of course just name the um the ionic compound the way we've talked about it in the first la last class's lesson okay um let's look at uh this last one here uh the last ones and we're just going to look at the, the the second part here a tetrahydrate tetra is four okay so we would have a dot four H two O. And then of course this lithium sulfate, we do the crossover method. Okay. Uh, here a dihydrate. So it's a two H two O. Okay. The dot two H two O and in front of it is where we're going to put the magnesium phosphate. And lastly, we've got potassium carbonate octahydrate. So whatever that potassium carbonate is, is where we're gonna put, followed by the dot and 8H2O, okay? That's how simple, um, they are simple, but again, if you don't know what we've, you know, if you're struggling with what we did last class, that's what you wanna review um, if you want to be able to uh, handle these, um, uh, these naming that the high these hydrate compounds but it really is as simple as that okay um so let's look at the answers here oops so there are the answers okay um as uh i i get now one thing you'll notice um 
I use both the stock and classic system to name it. And I don't expect you to use both. You either will use one or the other. Understand also, don't mix and match. Never use a Latin name and a Roman numeral. The Roman numeral is for the English version of the metal name. The Roman, the, uh, sorry, the Latin name is, you know, that ending is what tells me, am I using the higher or the lower of the two charges? Okay, so please do not mix and match. Do not, you don't, do not write this down ever like a cuprus and then put a one, okay? That is wrong. Okay, I put a big X through it. Okay, that's wrong. Okay, if you use Cupris, use Cupris only. If you're, you're going to use a Roman numeral, give me the English version of the metal name. Okay, so let's clear that. Okay, let's stop sharing that. Let's share. Which time have I got? Countdown's looking at two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, so covalent compounds. Um, with covalent compounds, understand that with covalent compounds, you're still using the Greek prefixes just like we were introduced in the hydrates, um, but there is no crossover. And, and the one thing that I wanna make note of and, and really, really accentuate is the fact that we are never looking at metals. No metals are involved with covalence. Covalence, you're only looking at the non-metal. So it's only non-metal, non-metal. Um, that's with our, um, our naming, okay? Um, the endings are eyed, eyed endings, because they're all binary. Okay, they're all binary. Okay, um, so with regards to naming these, if you look uh, really quickly to the sample problems, okay, um, no crossover rule is necessary. Uh, they all end in IDE, um, but we use the Greek prefix to tell us how many uh, are with us. So if you look at this first one, there's only one carbon, so it's carbon tetrafluoride. Next one. Uh, di-nitrogen, di-fluoride, okay? So two nitrogens, two fluorides, okay? Um, one thing to make note of, and, and I don't know if I'm gonna get it in here in this time. Really, I should name this as monoxide. We only use the mono um, for the second, uh, non-metal if there's only one of that non-metal. Okay, that's the only time we use mono. We don't use mono for the first non-metal. We use it for the second if there's only one non-metal. I'm just waiting now for this thing to kind of just kick me out. Uh, like I said, if it kicks me out, we'll try to reconvene again in a minute. Um, so I'm just going to try to reboot uh, another set.